okay, y'all, just wait to see if anyone comes on here. Just an impromptu live. I'm sitting here in Oxnard, California, waiting to pick up a load that's going to take me back to Springfield, where I can drop my truck off to get it repaired and take myself to Texas to get myself repaired. We're both going in for a little nip and tuck, as it were. So, anyway, guys, just figured I would um, come on here real quick and say howdy. See if anyone's out there just setting. And, uh, of course, we got a fleet message today talking about um, uh, how it's going to be real slow over the next um, couple days, at least, for the weekend. So, it looks like a lot of people are setting for the weekend that are at Prime, which that kind of sucks if you ask me, um, but it said it's going to be like that for the unforeseeable future, which I know we're supposed to be picking up here soon in the next month or so, but, you know, I'm kind of glad I'm going to be down for a couple weeks, so I will roll into Springfield, sorry guys, I'll roll into Springfield probably in, um, let me see, hey, what's going on, just started. Uh, my 30k with Wilson. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Well, I hope you do real good at Wilson. Uh, what is that? T3 trucking? You know, um, they pull a lot of prime freight. But, um, yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm fixing to, uh, yeah, and also T3, let me know how that goes. You know, because we're always looking to inspire other people that are either coming to prime or that are in trucking letting them know options that they can do to uh, in trucking because, you know, sometimes Prime slow, sometimes Swift is slow, sometimes Wilson's slow. And there's lots of other options you can do in trucking and it's one thing we always need to be sharing with each other. But anyway, I'm going to be showing up in uh, Springfield probably late Monday night, early Tuesday. And I've been telling them for a couple months I needed to be in Springfield by the 5th um, and reminding them every week. That's why I say, hey, give lots of notice. Lots of I get 30 days or more notice. You're not required to. But you, because you can go at Prime. I want to, if you're leased, not if you're company. If you're leased, you can say, I want to be home tomorrow or whatever. Doesn't mean they're going to get you there unless you, you uh, drop off the trailer at a yard and you deadhead. But if your company, you don't have that option. But I've been telling Prime for a couple of months. I even rescheduled surgery once. And then my dispatcher got me this load, thank God, with the weekend being slow like it is. It's going into Prime, but they're not getting me loaded until, what is it, um, 1900 or so tonight. And i got to go 1,800 miles in less than, you know, about 24 hours, 28 hours. There's no way I'm going to make it if I want to arrive there early. But as long as I get there sometime on the 25th or even early the 26th where I can head to Dallas, I'm good to go. And then I will jump over and get down to Dallas and go get this vagina removed off my neck and, uh, get all this kind of tuned up. Nervous about it, though. Really nervous. But, you know, hey, you only live once. Gotta tune the stuff up and look ha become halfway decent. So, um, how many of y'all are just setting this week? And, I, and please give me some thumbs up. Let me know you're on here. How many people we got. Let me see. I definitely will. Prime wouldn't take me until next year for a uh, suspension on license two years ago, but they found, I found Wilson, I'll be leasing. Awesome. Well, you'll be also hauling frame freight, most likely. But, you know, like I said, I used to think Prime was the beginning and end of everything. The best company out there. Blah, 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 blah. No, they're just like any other company. I do like Prime. I like their lease purchase program. Um, I like uh, the pay was really good, at it, but right now I don't think it's any better than uh, Swift. I don't think it's any better than Wilson. I don't think it's any better than any of them. It's just one program and many. Um, 
the thing is every once in a while other companies offer better programs or better pay or better home times or a cheaper lease or you know stuff like that you just really have to do your research and find out a company that's good for you that's going to work for you um, at least that's what I would do and I mean right now my uh, deals kind of tied to prime you know uh, with the purchase of my truck but that doesn't mean I wouldn't turn my truck in and just walk away if it got really bad and go into something else I mean I came into trucking during COVID after losing my company, well, I sold my company for parts for next to nothing because the governor shut us down saying we were non-essential. And then I came out, came into trucking. My father was a career truck driver. I have other family members that are truck drivers. And it just kind of, me and my sister were the last two that we thought would come into trucking. I always thought it would be one of my brothers if one of them did it. None of my brothers did it. My one sister became a nurse practitioner. And me, of all people, became a truck driver. And I was really shocked to find out how many women were in the profession. Because when you're driving around a little four-wheeler, you're not looking up the truck to see who's driving them. So I was really shocked and pleased to see that there's a lot of women in trucking now. I think it's pretty awesome. And there's still a lot of more men in trucking. It's mainly a male-dominated field. But I really, I, I enjoy trucking but I will be retiring from trucking probably in about three to four years max. Um, I thought about uh, delivering trucks for a living from the factories to the dealerships. That There's one company called Truck Movers, but if you are interested in that, you can really research it. Just Google um, semi-delivery companies, stuff like that, and um, a lot of things will come up. And I'm sure then, like with other companies, there's a lot of opportunities. Some are better for this, some are better for that. And some, you know, and also those truck moving companies, you deliver stuff like school buses, you know, those uh, UPS vans, stuff like that. Then there's also the RV delivery business. That's a good little business to get into. But the great thing about those type of companies is they're part-time, or you can work them as a full-time thing. But it's not like when you're a lease operator that, you know, you're paying that lease. It sucks for trainers. It absolutely sucks for trainers. Let me tell you, um, right now, this student I have now made more than I did while he was on my truck. Um, you know, and he's a good, good guy. He's a real nice guy, actually. Um, but he made more than I did. Uh, I will never train over the winter again. In fact, I'm going to do at least two more students when I get back from surgery. And then um, winter will come, I'll shut down, come back, do two more, pay off my truck. And then I will probably take it, have it, the uh, back of it redone, um, have the fifth wheel plate taken off, have it made for hauling uh, like bumper poles or fifth wheels, but not with that kind of fifth wheel. There's a place that sets them up for hauling RVs commercially because if I do that, I don't want to be hauling, um, oh shoot, I do, just a second. Hey mom, oh it's going good, can I call you back in just a little bit mom, I'm doing a live on YouTube, bye bye. Sorry about that, guys. That was my mother. Um, where was I? Oh, but I'm going to be having the deck redone on it if I stay long enough to pay off the truck, which I think I will. It, it would have to get really bad where I just couldn't make a living at all. Um, uh, when they, when do you come back from? Okay, uh, on the 28th, they're actually doing the surgery. On the 8th, they're removing the stitches. 8th of um, April, and my brother will drop me back off at Prime sometime either late night the 8th or early morning the 9th, and I'll go through my truck, get it ready for another student, really deep clean it, um, 
and it'll be out of the shop by then. I also want to take in it over to Volvo because that door doesn't lock right and this keeps going out on me for the window. So, I, But otherwise my truck is running great. Everything's been fixed. Um, and then I want to interview a couple possible students at that time. I'll put myself into doing because I will not technically be released to go back to full work for, let me see, 12, until the 12th. So that gives me a few days to get my truck ready, get everything ready, because I will have to wear a special mask that will be iced, packed. I, I, I've only, it's only been described to me that they have these uh, packets you stick like frozen corn in. I said not peas, they go, no, because they get mushy, and not ice because it melts and soaks you in water. So they suggest frozen corn you stuff in it and then it lays over your face. It velcros to that mask that you put on. And I got to do that 24 hours a day for 14 days. So, you know, yes, I can take it off to take a quick shower. Um, but you're not allowed to get your hair wet, your face wet for the first, um, however many days, and then of course once the stitches are out, you're obviously able to wash your hair and do things like that. Um, but I'll be, like I said, living in my truck the, from when I get back up late the 8th, 9th of the 8th, 8th or 9th, you know, I will be back in my truck there at Prime in Springfield and just, you know, getting things ready. i got to buy new rugs and stuff like that. I usually throw out, throw out the rugs in between students and stuff like that. So, um, and then like I said, I'll take a student. I'll get back to work um, and just get going. So, who, what all, um, where all are y'all working that are on here right now? I know we got, uh, I think it's T3s at Wilson Logistics. Um, okay, that's a, uh, yeah, it does suck for trainers. Um, when do you come? Okay. Yeah, Jeff, where are you working in? Uh, TC, where are you working at? And any of y'all, and how's it going at your work? And are any of you at Prime, did you get the same message I got about us not really having freight this weekend that we're going to be just setting? Luckily, I already got freight. And so did Gypsy, another friend of mine I called, and she has freight. So, um, did y'all get stuck anywhere? And if so, where are you shouting at me from? And where are you watching from? And any of you at any other companies besides Wilson that can maybe share with everyone in the group where, where you're working? Is it good? Is it, are you right where we're at with Prime? Are you company? Are you lease? And any opportunities you hear for people with CDLs. You know, full-on CDLs, like you can drive a big rig. Because um, I also know some people with CDLs, they can also get a bus endorsement. Uh, drive for Greyhound, which I would not recommend. Or you can um, do little tour buses like, uh, what was the name of that one guy? He used to work for Prime. Captain, Captain Dave? I don't know. What was that guy's name, y'all? You know the one that used to work for Prime and then he went back to work in California and he now does um, shuttle buses and stuff like that, tour buses. Do y'all know who I'm talking about? He had a brown beard and was a real cool guy. I met him in uh, Springfield and I just can't remember his name. Oh, talking about uh, channels. Y'all need to go check out Peruvian Trucker. I love his channel. It's a real good channel. Um, there's another uh, tanker driver uh, called Rex. You can check out his channel. Um, and of course, No Hippie. We got to always keep No Hippie in the fold. Um, company flatbed drivers, I see. Uh, what about uh, flatbed drivers at what company? Prime? See, I thought about I thought about doing flatbed. I really did. I thought that would be kind of a cool thing to do and keep me in shape. But I heard people make no money in flatbed, none. It prime. Now understand. I know in other companies like um, RST. I forget the name of their company, but are they uh, 
have flat bed and it goes to Alaska and stuff and then people are making some banks some serious darn money um I'm at Prime um do dedicated okay what oh okay. well wait 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 dedicated um as a flat better what region of the country and now I'm really interested in this uh southbound hey uh you're dedicated so uh, are you a flat better are you a um are you on the company side? Oh, company flatbed. Okay, okay, so you're a company driver. So you're not on your own truck. Yeah, I was thinking of doing flatbed as a um, owner off and see if um, I could get a uh, dedicated route because I just bought my home. Oh, by the way, y'all, I'm going to share it with you guys. I just closed on my house on Wednesday, and it's in Quartzsite, Arizona. Hey, Zach, Zach? No, that cannot be the Zach that was on my... Is that the Zach that I trained? Oh my gosh, I wonder if that's... Oh man, that would be... Zach, are you the uh, one I trained? home every weekend. I live in East Texas. Well, where do, where where does your load go from in East Texas to where? Because I, like I said, I just closed on my place in Arizona. It's in Quartzsite, Arizona. You know where the Loves is? And on the other side, there's a uh, pilot, and it's right on 10, just about 30 minutes from the California border. Oh my gosh, you need to call me, Zach. You do. You need to call me, young man. Yeah, I, I was thinking about you just the other day because last time you saw me, I was about 100 pounds heavier than I am now. Man, that, how's the wife and kids doing? Y'all, Zach is one of my students. I'm very proud of him. And are you still at Prime? I haven't asked Mary. Um, I pick up at um, American Gypsum in... Okay, in Oklahoma, and uh, you do a three. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. How how much is it paying, if you don't mind me asking, roughly? What is your take home every week? I have family in Oklahoma. My CDL's out of Oklahoma. But I'm really looking for something that maybe goes like between Southern California and maybe Oklahoma or Texas, you know that, and on the I-10 corridor somewhere. I swear, I would take something if I staying as an owner off if I was bringing home only 1500 a week if I was home on the weekends and that's not much compared to what I normally make that's nothing in fact so um yeah that is crazy you're lucky but, you know that sounds like a good job but Zach wow I need to hear all about the wife the kids um your father-in-law, the whole the whole shooting match, how everything's going. You know, I've been thinking about you, wondering how you're doing out there, and I keep trying to remember to ask our dispatcher, but I keep forgetting. Did you have a great Christmas, all that stuff? I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, Zach was one of my very favorite students. Him and George were probably, and then Jawan were probably my top three students. Between 1400 and 1700 a week in your home on the weekends. Wow, that is really special. Who's your, man? I need to talk to you, and I, I don't know how to get you my phone number. I would not mind. I'm thinking of taking the flat bedding course there at Prime, even whether I go flat bed or not. I'm thinking of taking the flat bed course. Um, because I think it's only like a, a three-day class. And, uh, because if I could possibly get on a dedicated route, and, you know, I could see the gypsum going all the way to California and back, too. That would be pretty sweet. That really would be nice. Um, 
that's some decent money to be home every night. Um, let me see. Is that Daisy? Let me see. Love you, Miss Mother Tree. Oh my gosh, you are so sweet. I am with artists, um, inward facing cameras and audio. Absolutely hate that. Well, let me tell you, new people coming into Prime are going to be faced with that on the new trucks as they come in. And I, you know, that's another thing. That's why a lot of people are thinking of when their leases are up, jumping to another company. I'm not in trucking yet, considering it as my retirement career. That's what it kind of is for me, waiting, wanting a great trainer at Prime if I join. Um, I love the Q uh, sent, spent winter. Oh, are you talking about Q Mountain there in um, Courtside? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm a total RVer also, so but I bought a house there. But I will be buying me uh, another RV. I lived in one in my driveway of all places for a couple years and let my kids have the house. And um, I love living tiny. I love living in RVs. Um, Jeff, yes. Um, oh, that is way too awesome. You know, my house it has a view of Q Mountain. You know, it, it's, it's really a cute little place. It's a small place. It's just a one bedroom. Um, I got a jacuzzi and all that stuff. I'm really happy. I only paid 110000 for the house. So I got a good price. It's about 10 years old. Um, it's uh, one bedroom, one bath. It has a loft. Um, and it has like 12 foot ceilings. It's a nice little house. Little living room. It's got a uh, porch that goes the full length of the house. And a covered carport. But I'm fixing to turn that into an Arizona room and stuff like that. So, you know, it's just a nice little home, but if I, now I'm kind of looking to be closer to home, and if I could get a dedicated run, I would take less money if it was kind of consistent. Like, if I could even, after paying all the expenses on my truck and everything, and being a solo, be home on the weekends, um, Crystal Pizza is great. I have not eaten there. Um, I went to this Mexican food restaurant there in um, Courtside. I got sick as a dog, let me tell you. And um, there's this, uh, Steve, his name's Steve. He teaches um, art classes there, and I've been taking the art classes. It's a lot of fun. But um, I really am looking to be home more. Um, maybe start dating again and get out there and enjoy. But this is kind of my retirement career, but in retirement, I'm, I'm going to be buying a food truck um, next year. And, well, food trailer that I uh, run in Quartzsite for the three and a half, four months of the year during the winter, when over like a million RVers descend on there every year. And I'm going to be doing e-bike rentals where you rent out electric bikes to tourists along with the electric trikes and sand rails. And that's, I'm going to do that three and a half, four months out of the year. And then I'm going to deliver RVs or deliver semis uh, during the rest, you know, a couple months, um, probably July, August time frame when it's just too hot to be at home. There in Quartzsite, I'll deliver big rigs and deliver um, RVs. And that's kind of my plan for retirement, and that'll happen in around 2000 and, God, I don't know, but in about three years, so 2027, 28 time frame, I'm going to slow way down. But like I said, any ideas any of you got, um, let's hear it, let's share with each other. And you know, that's one thing I love about my subscribers. Everyone's real friendly. They're real supportive of each other. And this isn't a Prime channel. I know I'm wearing my Prime swag here. That's another thing, y'all. And I don't know how many of y'all are Gen X like me. Um, oh, wow. It is my guy. It's uh, No Hippie Trucking and Transport. 
Hey, Lyle, how you doing, sweetie? Um, y'all need to go check out his channel, No Hippie. He has an awesome channel. And he's got a channel some of y'all don't know about. It's No Hippie Barbecue. The dude has a real nice channel over there y'all need to check out. But, you know, I am looking forward to the next few years. But, like I said, this channel is not a quote-unquote prime channel. It is on trucking and our lives as truckers and alternatives. Because some of us are getting kind of a little bit on the burnout side. Um, and as we get older, we're looking for our exit strategies. Whether it's going to be flat-out retirement. Me, I, it's, it's just not in my DA. DNA to flat out retire. That's why I'm going to do the winter business there in Courtside and have the food truck and have the uh, rental business as far as renting out e-bikes, e-trikes to the RVers. I might even uh, bring back a couple horses and carriages for there in Courtside, which I think would be really neat because for those of you who don't know, I used to have a horse and carriage company in Bricktown in Oklahoma City and that was huge hugely profitable. I really enjoy my, enjoyed my horses. And this is the first time in years I haven't had horses. You know, since I was like 18 is when I sold out my carriage company and became a truck driver and then got as big as a house. And now I've lost over 145 pounds in a year and a half. So, um, I stopped weighing at 345 pounds, and I am down to about 178 now, and I'm going to probably take it down to 165, and then allow myself to gain a few pounds, um, but like, it's left me with all this loose skin, and then I got some on my stomach, we're going to, in November, do a circumferential body lift and a BBL and just kind of tighten everything up. So, and that's another thing. Y'all need to take good care of your health on these trucks. It could destroy you. Now, um, for some of my friends and some of my subscribers that have been with me a while, you know I went in and got gastric sleeve about a year and a half ago. But I only lost, I lost like 50 pounds or more before the surgery. Then I lost like 25, 30 pounds after just you with the gastric sleeve and then kind of plateaued. And then I went on Majoro or Ozempic and lost 100 pounds in about six months. So that's how I got my weight down. And now I'm eating better you know, but I still, every once in a while, I have to have my pork rinds, like, you know, guilty pleasure here. But I don't eat much, you know, three or four pieces I'm full. Um, then I eat jerky for a snack. Um, I don't really eat sweets much. Every once in a while, I'll break down, have something, but it, it's rare. I If I eat something like Taco Bell, sour cream, I get sick as a dog on fast food. I mean, violently sick, quickly. Um, so, when I come back after my face and neck is healed enough, I think that's like eight weeks out, I'll be able to start going to the gym again, and I'm going to start working out real hard, because I've lost a lot of, uh, muscle in my legs, and that just won't do. I mean, I had dancer legs, I was a dancer, professional dancer for years, and I'm like, oh no, 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 that did not work for me, so I'm going to start getting back into the gym. Um, and really, really working out, and I'm going to do it at least four days a week, so i got to bite the Uber bullet and start doing Uber to the gyms, because you just can't get these big rigs into Planet Fitness enough. I know a lot of them you can, but searching for them, it, it's just hard to do. Okay, let me see. Vlogs, how can you gym and truck? How can you go to the gym and truck? Is that what you're asking? Well, a lot of um, the uh, Planet Fitnesses have room for big rigs, but I don't like driving into towns. I don't know routes I haven't gone just to get to the gym. So, on the Planet Fitness app, if, if you pull it up, it'll show you all the Planet Fitnesses near you, where your current location is. 
And what I'll be doing is instead of, you know, you can pull it up on Google Maps and look, okay, here's lots of room. You don't know what time of day that, that was taken, that picture was taken, it, where that parking lot appears big enough. And you don't know if there's a truck route into there. So to me, it's just, you know, it, it's just not worth it unless I can literally see it from the highway. So what I'm going to be doing is taking Uber four days a week at least to the gym. I'm eventually going to get an e-bike for the back of my truck. I need to find uh, maybe detail or go to an e-bike shop that can actually put a rack on the back of my truck. I'm going to pull one of my um, load lock racks down and put something for an e-bike. That I will pull down and also take to the gym. And also you can do lunges and stuff when you're not at the gym. We can be doing crunches. But it, when you have a student doing any kind of workouts on the truck itself, it's just next to impossible. You know, the trucks just get crowded. I'm, there's going to be different rules the next student. Um, and there's going to be much less allowed to be brought on the truck. And I'm going to pull, now that I have a home, I'm going to be pulling a lot of stuff I have on my truck and leaving it at home where I can keep this a lot more tight right and looking better. And that's another thing. You know, I live on this truck 24-7, 365 days a year. Never tuck home times. I will be starting to do home times in between students. And I'm going to try to do a 34, at least two, while I have the students on the trucks where we can stop, do our laundry, you know, they can stay in the upstairs loft, uh, do all their laundry, we'll um, re take, get in my car, we'll go to a Walmart in a neighboring town, um, I'll cook up batch meals and fill my freezer with them where I just have to either put it in my galazon um, and bake it or I can nuke it, you know, because, I mean, it, I don't know about y'all, I go in to a loves to grab a little snack. I end up spending 25 to 30 bucks. You do that once a day, that adds up. I can feed myself going home cooking for scratch. I can feed myself on 30, 40 bucks a week and eat really damn good. You know, but you go blowing it at these fast food places and stuff at these truck stops. It's a ripoff, and I found out recently, I was talking to a manager at, um, I think she was managing a Taco Bell, I don't remember if it was at a um, Pilot or at ATA, but she was managing another Taco Bell in the same town, and they, they transferred her to that. She says the markup is ridiculous from a regular Taco Bell to a truck stop talk about. And I'm sure that goes the same with um, like your uh, subways and everything else. I mean, it's sad. It's They set these places up to gouge us. And it, it's upsetting in some ways because if you think about it, these people's existence wouldn't be even possible without truck drivers. I mean, they couldn't go to get their medicine at the stores. You know, at the pharmacy, they uh, go to a doctor for what? There would be no scrubs. There would be no tongue compressors. There would be no um, little uh, deals, stethoscopes for listening to the hearts. There would be nothing if it weren't for us. We are everything that happens in the United States, in Canada, most of Europe, except for these third world countries, if it wasn't for us, people would starve to death. They would die of horrible diseases. Yet we are treated like second class citizens by a lot of our 90s and 01s. Um, some of them don't even have bathrooms for us. We are talked down to, talked to like we're children. I mean, it's really sad. And then the truck stops, they're just there to screw us over because they know we don't have many options as far as getting out and getting to places where we can have food. But 
you know, I cook on the truck. Now, if I'm cooking something like fish or anything like that, I cook outside the truck, but I still cook here at the truck. I don't want that kind of odor floating around, but I've made lobster on the truck. I've made crab legs, all that stuff, you know. I enjoy food, but i I got to eat healthier. And um, after the facelift and all that, I am going to start doing almost 99% of my food shopping now that I got a home and batch cooking there at home and then bringing it into my freezer, my deep freezer, my Dometic freezer on the truck. And, um, let me see. Lenny, hey, how are you doing? How are you doing, Lenny? But, yeah, all you... Uh, Guys, I want to hear as much as I can from you, all you flat bedders that are at Prime um, and on dedicated routes, and also any reefer drivers that might know some dedicated routes that are in the western region area, like maybe from Cali, Southern California to Texas or Oklahoma, anything like that that can get me down Highway 10. I want to hear about it. I'm really you know, I'm doing at least two more students, but come winter, I'm not taking a student until the following year. But if I find something dedicated that I can get on, that'll be the end of my training. You know, like I said, I don't have to make more than 1500 to max 2000 a week to be happy. I'll be thrilled because I won't be training and I can get home every week or even every other week would be so nice, you know, maybe do a 34, a couple every week and or every other weekend, and then um, do a home time uh, every six weeks, I would be thrilled. But I really want to do it as an owner off because I want to get this truck paid for, because like I said, I'm going to have the back modified, um, you know, and have it set up to commercially haul um, fifth wheels, bumper poles, stuff like that, and I don't want to use a flatbed because I want to be able to drop whatever, wherever, and be detached and be able to see things and do things that I can't do hauling a big trailer. You know, and okay, back to recommended YouTubers. I recommend, um, that RV couple, that's the name of their channel, they're real funny. If y'all are into RVing or anything, like that. It's a young couple and he used, him and his um, girlfriend used to, I want to call his wife, they've been together forever. They used to um, haul RVs commercially. They did drive away, which is where you drive the, fifth, the big Class A RVs, Class C. They actually pay really good as, you know, as much as a lot of truckers make. And um, also they did where they used a one-ton truck and they delivered those also, like the fifth wheels, bumper poles, and so forth. And some of these companies also will lease you flat bed trailers that can be hauled by like a one ton. You could haul a few te teardrops or whatever. I don't want to get into that part, even driving something like this, because I don't want the trailer behind me all the time. I want to be able to dump it, go to some cool place while I'm there, you know, hit Planet Fitness, stuff like that, you know, without having the big trailer behind me, because as most of y'all know, T3, okay, uh, trucking, um, congratulations, again, from, good luck at Wilson, yeah, good luck at Wilson, if you're switching over, um, but Wilson seems like, a, I, you know, I've not heard anything bad about Wilson, nothing, I mean, I heard some prime drivers bitching and whining like little bitches about them parking in the prime yard, but this is how I see it. Junior Honduras' fleet parks in the uh, prime yard, um, no hippies, fleet, mini fleet parks in the prime yard. That's part of the perk of, because Wilson has certain trucks, the ones that park at the prime yard, haul exclusively prime freight. Okay, so they're paying their dues. In fact, those companies, those people with multiple uh, trucks are paying a lot more of their dues than us individuals are. So that's why I'm like, come on, you know, are we really this petty? You know, let, let's act like adults. So anyway, um, 
But go check out No Hippies channel. Check out if you're looking for some good um, trucking uh, advice, go check out uh, like instructional type thing. Uh, check out Junior Honduras. He does a lot of that and he does it well. Uh, Lyle at No Hippie has great stories he tells, you know, and I don't mean like fib stories. I mean like just good stories about his life on the road, his life prior to it. He has a lot of life experience that a lot of you young truckers just in general could benefit from. Um, like investment strategies. He was um, uh worked in the mortgage industry, stuff like that, so, and he has a lot of friends in these areas, and he, he's a good mentor for people, so really go out and check out his channel, uh, Tim Travels, Terry at Tim Travels, he was an attorney, a wealth of knowledge, he, uh, and he's kind of a bit of a historian, he's really into history, I love history, so I love watching his channel, uh, he served, proudly did a career in the Navy, served our country, Lyle, Thank you for your service. He was a Marine. I mean, those they're just great channels. Peruvian Trucker. He's from another country. He's awesome. Uh, I really enjoy his content. Jim C. I like watching his channel. I don't want to forget anyone because there's a lot of channels I uh, listen to. Sometimes just going down the road, what I call talking head, kind of like what we're doing. Lyle does a lot of talking head. Um where you can just listen to them. You don't have to watch it. it it's like a free podcast or a free uh, ebook. It, it's just, it's really good content. Um, oh, y'all, I don't, I know a lot of my subscribers also watch um, Trucker Todd, and I love Trucker Todd, and I watch Trucker Todd. Go watch his videos. He also does a couple weekly um lives, and he just recently had a stroke. I mean, he's fine, but he will not be able to drive again for a year. You're not allowed to drive for a year after a stroke. One of my students had a stroke right after she got off my truck. The only female student I trained, she had a stroke. Um, you know, so send Trucker Todd your prayers. Maybe go over, check out his lives, hit that donate button. Let's, we got to support each other when we're down and we're hurt. Um, and let's give him a hand up. And like I said, he does, he's really researched. It's kind of like Asian Mai uh, calls himself Mother Trucker. And, you know, I, I get a lot of people commenting saying, you know, Asian Mai stealing your name or you're stealing his name. Okay, let's get this straight. One thing he spells Mother different. And he doesn't mean it like, I miss Mother Trucker, and I was before that, I'm going to be a, I'll be a Mother Trucker, because I was training, became, becoming a trucker, and, um, you know, there is no bad blood between me and Alex at all. He's a bigger channel, but I had the name first, if you're just talking about Mother Trucker. There's uh, some that do with, nothing to do with trucking that has the actual name Mother Trucker. So I miss Mother Trucker, and before that, I was, I'll be a Mother Trucker, and Asian Mai is like, Mother Trucker, you know, so it's a little different, and I, and everyone's like, one person commented in my comment section, and what a douche, because me and, um, Asian Mai at Mother Trucker, his name's Alex Dipshit, it, we're gonna sue you if you don't stop using Miss Mother Trucker. Okay. Go ahead, you know, um, I'm trademarked, dipshit. Uh, Steve, let me see. Let's see, let's see. Um, Steven, what are your thoughts on Lyle's new, uh, drapes in his truck? I didn't know he had new drapes in his truck. I love Lyle's trucks, and I love his new purple truck, even though he let a new, um, new, uh, stu uh, not student, but put a new driver in it. Okay. Um, who, um, who are the best TNT trainers for older boomer rookies? Me. I'm the best for older people. Um, 
I love uh, shock and a lot of time. Okay, I'm good for older trainers. Um, Lyle's excellent. Um, in fact, better than me, has more experience than me. Um, uh, Terry at Tim Travels, awesome. TNT train. But the problem is, is you can't just come in and say, I want Lyle, or I want um, Terry, or I want a uh, mother trucker. You, you can't come in and just ask for us because it's not how it works. And the way it works is really stupid, too. Uh, because and The thing is, is you take a personality test, and then they match you that way. And that doesn't always work, trust and believe. Um, so, oh, by the way, y'all, uh, it's going to help my algorithm. Would you guys please all hit the thumbs up button real quick that are listening to me right now? Just, you know, just hit it a bunch of times for me. Helps my algorithm. Also, leave some comments, even if it's just, hey, what's up, bitch? You know, whatever I'm cool with. Um, that's going to also help you to promote this channel. And I really appreciate it because I am going to be putting in around November a lot more into this channel. Um, I just got a lot going on between now and then. And when I go out for surgery, for all you wanting updates, oh, thanks, sweetie. Thanks, V. What's that? V Log or something like that. Oh, thanks, V Logs. I appreciate the thumbs up. I, pre man, I appreciate all y'all. Y'all are so great. Yes. Oh, man, y'all are just so sweet to me. I appreciate you guys. But I'm going to be doing a bunch of shorts. My brother's going to do them. So uh, you'll see me fresh out of surgery in recovery. He's going to do a little 30-second short, publish it. And he's also going to be doing, turning it sideways where we can do, you know, the standard YouTube video. But he's going to take a little deal asking me questions while I'm totally doped up. So that should be fun. Like, how you feeling, sis? Or some shit like that. Then we're going to put together a weekly video or a bi-weekly video. Probably weekly at first. Then a bi-weekly. And you guys can just see my progression as I recover. As I go out. You know, because one thing with this job, it's it has totally it, it tore me down physically. And then I... This had you you hit a point that you got to decide is this what I'm going to do or am I going to make my trucking experience different and am I going to take better physical care of myself and show myself that love and choose a different route because if you don't as a trucker you're not going to last either if you just really let yourself go to that point point. and I've seen a lot of my friends from four years ago when I started, almost four years ago, to now gain tremendous amount of weight. So, I mean, I really went for it. I gained 100 and, God, almost 200 pounds. You know, turned into a total beast. Hid behind the steering wheel like you. If you look back at some of my videos, you'll see me leaning on the steering wheel. Like someone can tell I had a big fat face, you know. But when you're that big, you you give yourself delusions. Like, you know, I'm not that big. No one's going to notice. Yes, fat ass. They're going to notice. Or you'll see me sitting on the bunk with pillows under me like this. Like I need something to rest my arms on. No, the big fat ass belly right beneath it. There was plenty to rest on. Trust. Trust and believe. But. You know, you know the struggle. The struggle's real. And you got to make that decision. Am I going to take better care of myself? And make sure I can have a longer, healthier career. And be around for my loved ones. And, you know, it's finding that balance and finding a way to do it while you're on the truck. And I'm trying... And it's the way I'm kind of steering my channel. My channel's about my life and trucking because that's where my life is right now. And as I'm home more and I'm starting to plant all my fruit trees and get into my prepping and homesteading and, you know, urban homesteading, there won't be no animals. I know it's not a true homestead. I used to be a full-on homesteader. Um, but in prepping and preparing, I mean, if COVID's taught us anything, is we were willfully unprepared. 
we I know if y'all are like me, you know, as a homesteader, I was like, you know, hook nor crook, I, I'm prepared. Because, you know, I'm growing all my own foods, so I'm producing my own meat, I'm, you know, I was raising a family, canning, doing all this, you know, I would have been well prepared. But by the time COVID hit, my kids were grown. I moved off the big farm and I was on a smaller one. I was no, I had a garden where I was growing some of my own foods, but I no longer had chickens, cows. I no longer had goats to milk, none of it. You know, the pigs, none of it. It was all gone because it was just me. So, you know, that'll become more part of my life, how to keep growing up my own foods, um, preserving them, stuff like that for, as a truck driver. And that's why I picked the area I picked. You can grow citrus there. You, a lot of fruit trees, you know, they're just there for you. Plus, I have 40 acres in another spot of Arizona. And I'm fixing to buy um, another couple acres up um, around Concho or Williams or Snowflake or somewhere in there for during the heat of the summer there in northern Arizona. Because in southern Arizona, it gets a little bit hot you know, in the summer months. Not that I can't be in air conditioning, but you know, that's kind of where my channel's going to be going. But also, we're going to be doing lives and we're going to be talking about everything going on in trucking, trucking related things, because that's going to be part of my life. Even when I'm no longer a truck driver, I'll still talk about it. I'll probably do like things going on then in the news about trucking. Um, weather reports for truckers when I have more time to research that, you know, kind of to stay alive in my, with my trucking friends and the people out there that are still trucking. I think the trucking industry is fixing to change big time. They're doing automated trucking now and I think a lot of the mega carriers are going to be switching to automated trucks. Right now there's a route uh, for driverless trucks going from the Dallas area to Oklahoma City, going up and down the I-35 corridor. And that's not something in the future they're actively doing that now. And there's uh, automated trucking going from parts of California to Phoenix, Arizona. That's actively going on now. That's not somewhere in the future. That's now. So, I will be able to make it to retirement out of trucking because I'm not going to go much past um, I, another three and a half, four and a half years, I'm done. No longer a full-time trucker. But I will keep my channel talking about trucking, uh, giving things that are going on in trucking, and it's going to slowly start moving that way. And then um, here, probably after November, when I slow down, and I don't have students, I'm going to start doing Wednesday night lives from the sleeper with Mother Trucker, where we will all get in our PJs, set back in the sleeper, and I'm not talking about slutty stuff, so get over it. Um, get in our PJs, get comfortable, have little chats like this, but from the sleeper, we'll talk about things going on in our lives and trucking, how things are going. Um, I really want to get to where, um, for like owner ops, where we can find medical, the best medical for us, medical that will work in several states. And then also I'd like to bring on people that are doing some Roth IRAs, uh, where you're prepaying your taxes that way in retirement, you're getting that money tax free. Um, and what's the best Roths to go with? And also discussing index funds, dividend paying index funds, how to make our money work for us and pay us rather than just sitting there. And how to make trucking while we're here give us a better future. Make it count out here, guys. Um, um, what are your thoughts on Lyle jumping in the Grand Canyon in his prime truck? <laughs> what is your thing with Lyle? Lyle is my buddy, man. You can't be talking about Lyle, Steve. He's not jumping into the Grand Canyon in his truck. Okay, there must be some inside joke between you and Lyle. You guys must be buddies, and he's just busting your balls over here. But, um, no, Lyle, Lyle's awesome. Um, 
and like and like I say, go out and check out Terry. Um, another one that's uh, oh yes, yes, and I love Freight Skater, and he's not posting much lately, or I'm missing it. Um, I love Freight Skater. He's awesome. He is my friend. I fear he had to be your friend. You're going after him, kind of a softball way, but it's funny. Yeah, I'm a big fan of Lyle's, and he's like my mentor, even though he denies it. He's like, I ain't your damn mentor, lady. I'm sorry, Lyle. You got the job. You're stuck with it. But Lyle's really cool. He's like having a big brother in trucking. I, I think he's real awesome. And he, and you know, that's one thing I love about his channel. He actually cares about his viewers. He cares about young people coming up in tr trucking or older people like me coming in. He actually is there when people need, someone needs him. Tim same way. I mean, although I haven't called Tim about anything, but, you know, I watch his channel. Um, he's really awesome. Well, his name's Terry from Tim Travels. There's a whole story behind it, and he actually put it up on there. It goes back to when his kids were kids. You know, and his is one of those channels you can really go back and binge, because he has so many cool stories, and it's really fun to listen to him. Um, and he's very informative. Uh, let me see, what other good tr uh, channels and trucking channels in general are out there um, that I watch? I lo watch Camper Van Kevin. Remember, I'm an RVer, so if y'all are all into the RV lifestyle, there's Camper Van Kevin. I watch him. He has a really good channel. I watch the Anchor Homestead with Becky. Um, I enjoy her channel. I like the Nomadic Fanatic. Um, they're, they're fun people. Like I said, you just lay your picture of your phone down, you put it on autoplay, and you just listen to a bunch of things that are entertaining when you're going down the road. Um, there's, a, oh gosh, what is a big dog RV? There is um, lots of good trucker channels. But anyway, guys, I, like I said, I just wanted to come on here. We're, we're at almost an hour, so here in a couple of minutes, we're going to get off. But if i really like for y'all, um, when you come on in the future, if you can, you don't have to, but put what company you're with. Are they a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Are you looking for something different? I'm always keeping my ears open for something different. It doesn't mean I plan to do something different. I... I it's been a little rough here at Prime lately, um, but I do believe it's going to turn around. I do believe it's going to pick up. I will never train during the winter again, ever. Um, I'm going to try doing two students in a row because come November, I will not be training until the following spring. And if, if I train the following spring, I will do two more students. I want to pay off my truck because that will be at around the two-year mark. And... Um, this November will be the one year mark. Well, this October will be one year. Um, and I know I won't pay it off at the 18 month mark, but I will probably at the 24 month mark. I will probably pay off my truck and just be debt free because I want to be debt free. Um, and I believe that's really important. And I'm going to pay off my mortgage, which I wasn't originally going to get a mortgage because I like being debt free. but. I'm going to go ahead and I'll pay off my mortgage within the next two and a half, three years. That'll be paid for, but it's not much. But wanting to pay off my truck, too. But, you know, those are two big things to pay off. But if I pay my truck off first and I'm working without a truck payment, it's going to be a lot easier to pay off the mortgage. You know, and what little debts I do have, like, you know, I have debts on my, I bought my son a phone. All that's on my phone plan. I'm going to pay for all that. And then I'm going to shut that phone plan down and move on to a group plan with the rest of my family. And um, then my phone bill's going to be like $30 a month plus another $10 for my tablet. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm going with it. And um, let me know what trucking's meant to y'all when you came into trucking. What has trucking done for you? What are you wanting to get out of trucking? You know, um... If you have any questions, even if I don't know, there might be someone else in the comments that know. And, you know, let's keep those discussions going. Let's find a way to move forward in this industry and make your time out here matter. Because this, 
one thing I felt so, I love my father. I felt so bad for him because his whole life passed him when he was a career truck driver. He, you know, he owned stores before that and did oil fields because there was a big boom and that we're going to make his fortune there. So he sold the stores. We moved to here to, um, well, from here in California, in fact, the town, the town's one of the towns we lived in, Oxnard, and we moved to Oklahoma, and I felt like culture shock. I was taken to goat rope or hell. What were my parents thinking? Fashion was all wrong. The music was wrong. They were behind the times. You know, now you can, I, I, I'll never live in California again. I love the weather here, but Arizona's kind of my jam. I love Alaska. But this is kind of where I'm going to be is uh, Arizona. But anyway, I want to hear about y'all's lives, what you're doing, what your future plans are. Because you never know. Something you're doing might spark something in someone else that's trying to find that special thing. That way through trucking and to get to the other side of trucking. Or to do in trucking. You know, you just might have that next thing. Um... We welcome you to Arizona. Hey, okay, thank you. Arizona Trucker, are you with Prime or are you where? In what part of Arizona are you in? And are you on dedicated? Do you do local? I want to know. I need to know, sir. Um, yeah, just let me know because I am really looking for something to keep me home more. You know, like I said, I just closed on my house last week, but... I've been in RV or for a while, so that's how I kind of picked the courtside area. And to make money in, quote unquote, retirement and only have to do it over three and a half, four months a year because I am not someone that can sit at home and not earn money. I just can't do it. I want to enjoy my retirement, but part of that will be interacting with people, doing YouTube. Uh, meeting people at the food truck, renting bikes, doing sand rails. I might even get it into doing Jeep tours out there. And then the rest of the year, travel. And that travel might consist of me hauling some RVs with this truck. It might consist of me just doing my photography and getting into going around. Let me see. Um, I'm with Prime. Uh, going through, T oh, you're going through TNT right now. I will be leasing then buying a truck with Prime. I live in Phoenix. Okay, well, you know where Quartzsite is, right? I've been in Arizona for 32 years. Awesome sauce. Uh, you're a male, female trucker. Um, uh, tell me more about you. Um, gosh, you know, yeah, I'm really interested in, leave something for me in the comments. And also, any of you who want to look up my um, Facebook page, because then you guys can uh, meet me in the DMs, you know, and uh, leave uh, messages. Let me see. Okay. That's just, I don't want to show everything. Um, let me pull up my page. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to figure out how to home. Okay. This is me on Facebook. Now, understand, I do not always check Facebook. But this is the best way to get a hold of me off of here is to just go on my Facebook page, um, message me, uh, send me a friend request, and don't feel bad if I don't answer your friend request for a while because sometimes I never do. You just have to be hitting me up in um, the DMs, uh, you know, on Messenger, and eventually I'll see it and just say, hey, I know you from YouTube or from Prime or something like that, and that will catch my attention usually, or for you Arizona truckers, hey, hey, this is Arizona trucker, blah, 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 blah. Okay, guys? Well, 
now, let me see. Friend request just sent. Okay, Jeff, let me take a look. Oh, Drew Barrymore show. I love Drew Barrymore. Okay. Squirrel. Okay. Uh, I'm following Drew Barrymore. Okay, let me see. Hello, Barry. where those requests are. See, I'm just not, I am so not tech. You know what I'm saying, guys? I gotta find the notifications. I know. Okay, Jeff, I see you. I just confirmed you, okay? Arizona Trucker, if you want to throw in a request while I'm on here, and this is the best time to do it, guys. If you're gonna send me a friend request, go ahead and send it now. And I will confirm you right now. Just let me know you just sent it. And I'll go ahead and confirm you. Because like I said, I just don't, um, I don't do this much. But then it'll be easy for me to, okay, let me see. Um, sorry, saw you in Salt Lake City. Okay. Um, oh, what's my name? Okay, I just showed it on screen, but I'll do it again. Kayla Foos. Go ahead. That is my Facebook page. And uh, go ahead and send it to me. And just put your, your name out there where I can uh, accept it as soon as it comes in. And then we can be friends on Facebook and we can uh, chat in the DMs. And, uh, you know, that that's just my best way to do it. And unfortunately, I just don't hand things out real easily, you know, right here. And I thought about getting a phone just for uh, my YouTube channel. But the problem is, it, one thing, it costs extra money. And my, my channel isn't monetized yet. I mean, I'm qualified to monetize my channel. I just haven't done it. Um, but there's some hateful people on YouTube. There's some, I understand the trolls. And the bigger my channel gets, the worse it gets. I mean, there's like someone told me just the other day, you, because I, you know, I touch my hair, and I do. I, I, they're like, you need to just cut your hair. Or, um, they, they, people on YouTube feel so free to insult you, call you fat, call you old. I had one guy, because I was, you know, I've been talking about getting the face work done for a while. He goes, you'll never be pretty again. You'll, you're old. Stuff like that. Just mean things. Do I ever think I'm going to look youthful again? No. I'm not. Um, do I think I'm going to be beautiful again? No, I don't. But I want to be the best version of me I can be. That's what counts. You know, and people, when you're on YouTube, they feel it's okay to insult you. It, that you have no feelings, that they can just tear you down. And that's sad. That really is. But I think it's some part of human nature. People want to hurt you. They want to insult you. You know? And I never could stand that kind of person that had to put someone else down to step up and bring themselves up. I find that very sad and, you know, kind of pathetic. Okay, I still haven't got that request from Arizona, and I know I haven't because it's... Okay, I think I got the uh, request. One mutual friend, Junior Honduras, would that be you, Arizona? Are you friends on uh, Facebook with uh, Junior? And this is a picture of maybe you and your wife. Would that be right? Okay, anyway, I just confirmed that that's you. Awesome. So, yes. And I recognize you. Awesome sauce. Okay, guys. 
I, let me see. Hey, before I get off here, can y'all just slam that thumbs up button for me real quick? Let's see how many thumbs up we can get. And just a few seconds. Oh, there we go. Come on. Come on. Push, 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 push. Um, no, this is me. Oh, okay. Josh? What? Well, gosh. I don't know. Arizona, I guess, doesn't want to be my friend. I would say, I'm just heartbroken. Okay, Arizona. I'll see how y'all are. Once I get, and I didn't want to say the name because I didn't want, you know, anyone to, because when you don't use your name on, um, here you usually don't, uh, want people to have it. But thank you, Josh. I appreciate it. And Josh, are you are you, you're not working at Prime, then, are you? And like I said, this is not a Prime channel, so, I mean, I happen to be at Prime. That's another thing that cracks me up, is people like, and, you know, I won't do it because Prime doesn't want me to, but I used to, uh, put my, uh, camera on a tripod on the dash and film the road as I went by, and I just talk about things I'm seeing. People call it Prime. Oh, she's recording, and you're allowed to record with Prime. You just can't, you can only do a voiceover afterwards. You can't talk about it as you're seeing it. Um, and I used to like when I'd be back in into a spot or something, I would put it on the dash, and uh, it would show me backing up, or I'm, I'm pulling through a parking lot, and I would have the camera facing me as I'm going, then I would stop, I would flip the camera around, and then it would show me going out of the parking lot and onto the highway and so forth. And I keep talking. And um, I used to do that, but I don't do it anymore because there's people on the channel that just want to ruin it for everyone. I don't get that type of mentality. I don't understand it, not even a little. But, you know, it is what it is. But one thing, I have so many great subscribers. And I do feel so lucky. Hey, Josh. Local fleet fuel um, driver in Oregon paid by the... Oh, yeah, I remember. I remember you telling me about that, too. And I did get your friend request, and I did accept it. But, um, anyway, guys, I do feel very lucky. I think I have one of the very best subscribers and kindest, nicest people, and yeah, there's jerks in anything that just want to bring you down, they want to insult you, they want to start arguments with other people on this, I mean, you know, and I am thinking of starting another channel, but it, it won't be for everyone, it's going to be called Politically Incorrect views from somewhere in the middle where common sense lives. And it's going to be about things going on in the world. All this, the world has gone insane. Totally insane. Me, I am what you would call a liberal Republican. I'm Republican. Um, but I don't believe in all this crap that's going on. Um, I think the Democratic side of the aisle has gone way too far in certain things. I think the Republican side of the aisle has gone too far in certain things. So, you know, um, it, it just the world's gone insane. Um, common sense ain't so common. No, common sense, unfortunately, is not so common anymore. But see, I don't want my trucking channel, I want it to be inclusive for everyone. Uh, and because there is every walk of life in trucking. There really is. Um, but I see them transitioning children. I see um, these borders just being wide the fuck open. Um, and people just pouring into our country without any kind of background checks some of these people, they're, they're getting like 3000 something a month, plus housing, plus medical, plus benefits. We aren't even getting that. People on our own welfare systems aren't getting that. I seen uh, an interviewer here in California. He was uh, 
independent. He wasn't um, a Republican channel like Fox. He wasn't a, a Democrat channel like CNN. And groups coming in from China. Groups coming in from uh, Syria. Iran. All these coming up through the Mexican borders into the United States. Unchecked. I believe in illegal immigration. We are a melting pot of people from all over the world. And I love it. And I love the Mexican people. I love... Uh, one of my good friends is Muslim. Uh, his name's Ali. And his wife's seen a beautiful, wonderful people that were there for me when I was at some of the lowest points in my life. Um, I have my Aunt Keon. She's Korean. Um... Uh, my Uncle Al, he's an African-American man. Uh, my family is a melting pot. This country is a melting pot. All these beautiful cultures from all over the world in our country is what makes America great. Um, but we cannot be letting in people without extensive background checks and just willy-nilly because we cannot support all these people. I think Biden is one of the worst presidents in U.S. history. I don't think Trump was a great president. And I know, see, that'll piss a lot of people off. I think the man's an idiot. But I think out of the two of them, Trump's the better bet. And that's who's going to get my vote, since he's the only Republican running. And it's not because he's a Republican. It's because he's a better president than Biden. Biden is an idiot, and he's senile. He should not be president. And if we had a better president than Trump, a better possibility, I'd vote for him, but we don't. Uh, most of the men crossing the borders are military age, right? You know, and, but it's men, it's women, it's everyone crossing the borders, so doing it willy-nilly. Um, I believe in immigration. I believe in legal immigration. And, you know, but this isn't something for this channel. You know, um, but we have got, I'm a Christian. I get a lot of Jewish friends. They believe in the same God I believe in. They just don't believe in his son. They think his son was a prophet. I believe he is the only begotten son of God. Um. So, I'm never going to apologize for being a Christian. Um, I was surprised that um, the Quran has all our Bible stories in it. They believe in the same God we believe in. But they believe also in the Prophet Muhammad. But they, Noah is in their Bible. All the characters, you know. And I didn't know Christianity was older than the Muslim faith. I didn't know that. Um, I have one of my very favorite students, George, my first student. He's a Mormon, but it's a Christian faith. Um, my mom's a Jehovah Witness, um, but she grew up a Catholic. So my grandmother was Catholic. I got aunts that are Catholic. We got Baptists in our family. We got everything. Um, we got every kind of political view. We got gay people in our family. We got trans people in our family. We... And I'm talking about real trends. I'm not talking about these letter people. I'm a furry or I'm identifying as the they, the, who gives a fuck. You're either a man or a woman or you're on your way to one or on your way out of one, you know. But there's two genders. I'm sorry. Two. One, two. And I don't give a shit what y'all think. If y'all don't agree, that's not my problem. That's your personal problem. But I believe in your right to be who you want to be. Just like I believe in my right to be who I am. You know, um, I support gays, lesbians, and trans people. Um, the letter people, not so much. But I believe they should be able to be who they want to be. But I don't think it should be taught gender theory in the schools. I'm just glad my kids, kids are grown. And my kids are all open-minded because that's how I raised them. Um... You know, I think there are 
very kind, brilliant people in every segment of society, and I think the more we learn about each other and treat each other with respect, love, and kindness, the more enriched our lives will be. So anyway, guys, enough about that. I will let you guys know when I do start the other channel. And I am going to be looking for me a couple co-hosts. Or maybe I'll have an occasional co new different host every week, a guest host. Um, and it's not, it's going to, well, I'm going to discuss like topics going on in the news that are affecting our world today. And I'm going to look at it from a common sense viewpoint. Because anymore, it doesn't hardly do any good to research facts. And I'll tell you why. Everyone has different facts, even though, you know, there's your facts, their facts, and then in the middle somewhere there's the truth. Anyone can find supporting documents for what they're saying on both sides. And I've learned that the hard way from my brothers. You know, oh, well, Trump didn't do this, he didn't, and I, was, I heard Trump saying it from his own mouth. But... Where, where can you find it? Well, you know, or I Biden didn't do this. Well, Biden didn't do a lot of things because he's senile and doesn't know how to do anything. You know, so there's facts supporting both sides of the aisle. But anyone can manufacture a fact that's not really true. But somewhere there in the middle, there's common sense. That's where common sense lives. And that's where most likely the truth is. Every once in a while, the outrageous is the truth. But my chance would be about like, well, that dog don't hunt. That just don't make no sense. You know, we're going to talk common sense. And if it's not that way, maybe it should be that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I will be an unapologetic Christian. Unapologetic. Will I be a good Christian? Probably not. Because, you know, sometimes my mouth gets away from me. But I'll always ask God for forgiveness through Jesus' name because that's how I believe it's done. You know, um, Jesus came down, sacrificed himself on earth for us where our sins could be forgiven. So when I ask God for forgiveness, I do it through Jesus' name and show the proper respect. And the Jewish people, I think, I'm not sure if they probably pray directly to God, which is fine. Because um, I know God's going to be saying, okay, he's not going to say, you didn't believe in my son, so you people have, are going to be destroyed. They were his chosen people at one time. Um, and I think he's going to look at people's individual hearts, same with Muslim people. They believe in God. They just don't believe in Jesus. Um, now, you Satanists, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Oops. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I, I can't, I don't have a good word. Um, atheist, I feel bad for you, but it, it, it's your thing. If you're spiritual, whatever, you know, I, I just can't support that. But you do what you need to do. So anyway, guys, lots of love. I'm going to go ahead and get off here. We've been on here 83 minutes. I cannot believe anyone wants to listen to my ignorant country ass for that long. But I love y'all. And thank you so much. Let me see. Uh, good. It's so hard to see things. Um, my little cousin just got her hazmat. Oh, that's awesome. For fun. But she's scary. Uh, the risky. I pray for her all the time. And all the drivers. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, don't tell your cousin that, that you're praying for all the other drivers. Um, uh, yeah, I I don't want my hazmat, honestly, myself. It, it just doesn't pay that much more to have it, if at all. Um, and then, uh, but I would like to get into doing flatbed if I can. If I can find a dedicated route, I wouldn't even mind staying in Reefer with a dedicated route where I can have a decent income, drive solo, have my dog with me, and be home, you know, at least through home once a week or every other week, do a 34, or stop at home on my way through to stay the night, even if I'm not doing a 34, and 
you know, kind of get home every two or three weeks, four weeks for a weekend, and then maybe every six weeks for a few days. Pray for Lyle, LOL. You are just coming for Lyle, Stephen. Damn! I do pray for Lyle, though, automatically. He's in my prayers along with all my friends, you know. Um, but you guys, lots of love. And I will, um, I'll probably end up doing a live just before my surgery, the night before my surgery, if I'm not a bundle of nerves. And then, uh, like I said, we, my brother will be doing little, um, updates. Yeah. Um, prayers for surgery, Michaela, and speedy recovery. Well, thank you, sweetheart. I really do appreciate that. Um, so, anyway, you guys will be kept informed what goes on. I'm going to show them what to do. Pray for me. I will pray for you. Not a problem, sweetheart. Um, and I do appreciate you guys so much. And I'm going to go ahead and get off here because I could run my ignorant country mouth forever. And I will let you guys know when I do the other channel. And don't worry, I will equally piss off both sides. I will equally piss off Republicans and Democrats. Extremists on both sides. But most people, I do believe on both sides, we meet in the middle. We really do. It's just the extremists on both sides that really is bad. But I'll tell you one thing. I am so glad with the judgment of the Supreme Court not letting these states take. Um, Trump off the ballots. Not because I think Trump's a great president, but I think when you start playing with elections like that, you know, we got to really start getting scared for our country. It's just like if they tried to take Biden off the ballot. No. That's, we take someone off the ballot by voting for him in <laughs> You're talking about the prime food. Yeah, I remember your comment. Uh, and I asked you if you, you know, about your time in prison. <laughs> yeah, I can be a little smart ass myself. But okay, guys, mm, lots of love and thank you for all your comments. Thank you for the uh, well wishes for my upcoming surgery. I'm going to probably start doing. Um, little daily shorts saying so many days, this is what I'm feeling, a little nervous about this, a little nervous about that, all the way up until surgery, and um, there will be in November after I do the skin removal, all that stuff, and things are healed up, November, December time frame, I'm going to do a video that's a big, huge before and after, because I've been doing little clips all along my weight loss journey that I haven't been publishing just for this video knowing I had an end game in mind and then we're going to bring everything together and um, do that and then also in um, probably my five year mark at Prime five year anniversary we're going to do about my first five years at Prime or as general in general as a trucker what it's done for my life what I've accomplished in that five year period and where I'm at and how I got there and how you could get there or maybe you've done better in that time so anyway guys in the meantime we're going to share everything in these lives we're going to keep it civil we're going to treat each other with love and kindness um, we're not going to sit there bashing each other and we're going to do uplifting things instead of things that bring each other down okay guys lots of love mother trucker out until next time which will probably be, I know I'll do one on the 9th, but I'll probably, I might do one from my house in Arizona, uh, but I'll have ice packs all over my face and my brother will be there and stuff like that. Um, let me read this because once I shut this uh, film up to the end, I know I thought about doing that. If they'll let my brother come into the room when they're knocking me out, I will let him film up to the anesthesia. 
okay, or they, he might just be able to stay with me up until they put the IV in my arm and give me that, you know, that shot you get pre-anesthesia that you just kind of, uh, you know, like that, and then, of course, he'll come in and film me before I wake up, and as I wake up and all that stuff, you know, um, it, yeah, it, it's going to be funny, it'll be hilarious, y'all will be able to make fun of me for a long time on that, uh, make sure you record it, because when I see it, I'm sure I'll be so horrified, I'll be deleting them. That way you can make fun of me for years to come. Okay, guys. Until next time, let me find the, um, the stop button. Okay, I'm ending. Are you sure you want to end the live stream? Yes. Lots of love, guys, and thank you.